Well, hi everybody. Uh, David here over at Trek Builder. I uh, hope everybody's doing good. And well, it's been a while since I've done uh, a video last. Uh, just been uh, really busy and haven't really took the time to uh, gave a uh, uh, an update on my Voyager build. Uh, but today, here we are, and I've made some progress. Uh, it's been a slow haul, but it's starting to come together. I'm starting to get into the painting uh, side of the model, and I'm still doing some uh, some build up with uh, the electrical as far as the lighting goes and all that. But uh, so far, it's coming together great, and I'm happy with the results so far. Uh, but again, I got a long ways to go. But so I thought I'd just. Uh, just uh, give you an update here before I get into showing you my progress. Uh, Voyager is a challenge. Um, there's a lot of parts to it, uh, a lot of ways to think, you know, figure out how you're going to light it and light block certain areas. And uh, thank, thankfully, with um, uh, Trekworks uh, Hangouts, or I should say Boyd's Hangouts, with uh, the Trekworks and the gang hangout and the uh, sci-fi model action hangouts on Monday and Thursdays uh, the Trekworks and the gang hangout. I tell you I've learned a lot. Uh, you know anybody who's new into modeling uh, or a vet veteran at it uh, you know it's a it's entertaining to watch uh, to say the least and you really can pick up some great tips so uh, if you haven't checked out the uh, the hangouts uh, give it a whirl. Uh, check it out. Uh, join. I mean, it's it's a great way to uh, to throw out throw out ideas and get to uh, meet some fellow modelers out there in the sci-fi genre and beyond. And it's 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 a wonderful thing. I'm I'm glad it's uh, it's an invention that is is definitely well worth it. So. Um, anyway, I'm currently working, I'm jumping back between the aft section with the nacelles and the shuttle bay, uh, the aft section of Voyager and the secondary hull. Um, kind of started doing some painting on the, on the aft section. Uh, I finally got my deflector dish on the, on the secondary hull installed. Uh, I mounted a piece of wood inside for the rod for my base. Uh, I got that all put in and I fortunately had acquired some plastic that I got from work uh, that is technically styrene. Uh, it's gray and it really comes in handy for like you know mocking up some parts or scratch building you know different different things inside if you need to hold LED tape or LED LEDs or whatever. I mean, it's 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 a great. I got a bunch of this plastic, and it's I found uh, a real good use so far for it. So, um, so that's where I'm at. I just got last night. I got the uh, LEDs in for my my LED tape for my deflector dish, and now the challenge is trying to light block the the blue for the deflector uh, and keeping it separate from the window lights. So. I have an idea. I think it should work. Uh, and if anybody is watching this, and you know, if you might have a, a better idea, however, I'm going to be working on this this afternoon, so it might be a little too late by that point. But um, yeah, it's coming along good. Uh, so uh, before I get into anything else, I'm going to swing the camera around, and you guys can see where I'm at so far. And hope you hopefully you won't get seasick here because I'm not that good with cameras. You know, I would really like to have is a, uh, a a rig or, you know, jerry rig something where I can uh, mount a, uh, a sliding rod above my table so I can look down on down at my table with my with my camera instead of always keeping it on the tripod. But I don't think that's quite feasible. Um, but here we are. Let me zoom in here. You know what? In fact, I think I'm just going to take it off the tripod. Sorry about that. I think that would make it a wee bit easier. Here we go. 
So here we are. Um, again, I'm working on the uh, secondary hull right now. And what I've done so far is I've got my, I don't know how well the, the color, because the lighting is going to be, hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, as you can see here, I got the, uh, the base color on. Uh, I chose, it's a light gray. It's um, a Tamiya, in the Tamiya spray can. I believe it's the uh, light gray IJN. Uh, yeah, I think it's it. It's uh, Tamiya's light gray IJN. And, you know, after I started adding the, uh, the other, you know, a different shade of a different gray for the uh, other colors on this, you know, I kind of wish I went, went, went a little lighter with a gray, but it, it really, you know, after you get the other colors on, I mean, it, it's going to make this color look a lot lighter anyway. So I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the gray. I was looking for a darker gray than what the uh, actual kit suggests. So, um, so here, if you look straight on, uh, there's my deflector dish. And I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I was a little worried um, as far as the center of the deflector dish on the different colors I used, but uh, it turned out very good. I'm very happy with it. And as you can see, I don't have it lit up, but if I hold it up to the light here, uh, sort of, you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like when I, when I get it all um, covered up and get all the, the lighting complete. So that turned out really well. Uh, I was on a hangout last week and uh, one of the things before I went ahead and mounted the deflector dish is I didn't know exactly what what type of glue to use and it never dawned on me uh, that my canopy glue obviously is meant for clear plastic so uh, Boyd made the suggestion and he said uh, you know go ahead and use canopy glue that's that's the best way to do it and by golly I c it couldn't have turned out better so if anybody is looking at building this, and if you're not really familiar with glues and what to use, uh, because you know that I, that I already painted blue before I I glued it in, and canopy glue is the best way to go because it doesn't damage your uh, doesn't damage the the paint. Uh, you know it's water soluble, so you know if it a little bit oozes out, you know around the 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 lip there where it gets glued in, all you have to do is take like a cotton swab. Uh, just get it a little damp and uh, just w wipe off the excess uh, and it it works out perfect. I, I, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Uh, as you can see inside the uh, secondary hull I got my LED tape and you know I think at, at first glimpse uh, that looks like there, that's really not a whole lot of LED tape uh, for that whole section but really uh, those two strips sorry I'm bouncing all over the place with this darn camera. Uh, those two strips there are plenty uh, and it, th those the, the tape I use is very bright. Uh, it's like a warm white so it's it's a really really good uh, quality tape and yeah and it, it really works well. It's double density so yeah it, it lights up all those windows just perfect. Uh, in fact when I show you the aft section here in a minute, I'll show you how I tackled these back windows that are kind of hanging over the the body of the ship. Uh, and I'll show you how I'm doing that here in a second. But uh, let, let's look at the uh, the wood here I put in here. Uh, and that's what I used uh, for my, my, rod, my mounting rod right there. Uh, what I ended up doing is I carefully first drilled out my hole on the back or the bottom sorry uh, and then what I ended up doing is I went to my local Menards and I just pick up picked out a uh, I think it's like an eight foot strip it's an eight foot strip of uh, oak lattice I think that's what it's called and what I did is I took it to work and I drilled out the proper size hole for that and I just cut off a little tiny piece of the the lattice and I trimmed it down and I glued it Actually, I epoxied it right over the hole. In uh, this way, this little piece here will give quite a bit of support uh, to that mounting rod when I when I go to mount it. Uh, you certainly want to support the inside for the rod with something. Um, wood is the easiest. Um, I suppose you could try to come up with a styrene concoction of some sort or another, but uh, wood is the best way to do it. 
and I just glued it in with that uh, I used the 15 minute epoxy that you can find at your local hobby stores uh, that's this stuff over here if I can uh, grab it here and it's a two part if you look closely here I don't want to take out both bottles but they come uh, they come as a kit so I got mine at my local hobby town uh, but it's uh, the 15 minute mid cure uh, they also make a five minute and a, a 10 minute epoxy but if you want if you don't if you're not in a real big hurry and you uh, want some uh, play time you know so you, you have some working time so it doesn't harden right away uh, I found that the 15 minute epoxy works great uh, and it's you they I, I was told that it's recommended to leave it sit overnight uh, let it cure for 24 hours uh, but usually about six hours later I could tell it was pretty solid but um, this is the next day now and that piece of wood isn't going anywhere uh, that thing is like permanent I mean that that epoxy turns hard as a rock so it works it worked great um, and then once I get to the point where I have to mount the, the rod in here, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is then I'm going to level it off so, you know, I get my rod on and then make sure that it's, you know, not, not right now it's a leaning a little bit too forward. But uh, there's enough play where I can, like, put something, weight it down with some something very lightweight that will push it down and get it level. And then what I'm going to end up doing is around the hole here, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, epoxy around the rod and then leave it sit that way overnight and that thing is going to be permanent it's not gonna move it's gonna be uh, uh, great uh, so if you haven't used the uh, the epoxies the 5 10 or 15 minute epoxies uh, I would recommend it for something like this because it ain't going anywhere um, you break your model before that thing will come out uh, the other thing that I I kind of concocted up here uh, my little makeshift concoction that really turned out perfect is uh, this little piece of styrene or plastic right in here and I'm sorry if the lighting is not the best uh, but if you look here what that is is I got a bunch of this plastic from work and they come uh, it's actually a long strip uh, like about a five foot strip and I just uh, I just trimmed them down at work and I got a ton of these uh, and you can see it's kind of got the like this little lip here uh, and I cut it up in various sizes because I knew I was going to probably use something like this uh, to mount my LEDs for my deflector dish uh, so it would aim aim at the deflector dish head on and then I could just uh, what I ended up doing is that initially I was going to super glue that down but then I first my first use using epoxy was for that piece of wood and then I told myself, well, heck, why? I don't want that thing to ever break off, so I just epoxied that in. And that thing ain't moving either. I mean, that thing's permanent. Uh, and I mean, you, I'm not going to, like, press on it, but if, I mean, if I was to push on this and break it down, I'd probably bust the, the model in half before that thing ever, ever broke off. So, um, anyway, so I, fortunately, I got a bunch of this stuff, and it worked great for this application. So, and it's styrene. I mean, it's plastic of some sort, but uh, it's no different than the styrene, really, that you get in the store, other than it's, this is a little thicker. Uh, you can still cut it with a, with a scissors, a really hard, good, durable pair of scissors, uh, because an X-Acto and I probably would tr cut through it, but it'd be really tough. It, you'd have to be scribing that several times before you could, uh, before you could cut at it but anyway so yeah I got that styrene you know I got or that plastic I I also got it where they're a little bit smaller little pieces too which I mean I can use this stuff for a whole different all different applications and you know that it's kind of I'm fortunate I was able to acquire that uh, so anyway what I did is I took a, a strip of blue LED tape and I uh, I glued it or I peeled off the backing and I stuck it on there and it was the exact it, it was just I didn't plan on it being this way but the uh, the piece out of all the various sizes I cut uh, the one I figured would work best actually was the exact same size from LED to LED and so you know that tells you then that you know where your uh, solder tabs are it, it would have hanged over the plastic uh, so what I ended up doing 
I don't know if I can get in here. But I ended up just wrapping around because you know the traces are in, the traces for the uh, the circuitry uh, are wide enough and durable enough where I just folded it over, and then I just took some normal CA glue uh, with some zip kicker, and I just folded it over and I just glued glued both sides down. So now your wires are folded over on the backhand side of this thing, which uh, which really really turned out good. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then I just used, I just took a little dab of uh, CA glue here on the back of the model, and then I just tacked the wires down on the back, and you know now they just come out the uh, the side here, and it'll they'll just roll right around and down inside the uh, the mount the tube, because all my electronics are going to go down inside the base. So uh, now the the only thing that uh, I would say that I wish I would have done differently prior to mounting the, the piece of wood and drilling the hole for the rod is I wish, because after I did that, uh, as you can see here, there's like no room to mount that, you know, bracket or whatever you want to call it for the uh, LED tape. Uh, I did not leave hardly any play to, uh, to mount that. And also, uh, when you do when you do a, a concoction like this, where you got the LEDs and you're and you're using blue LEDs to shine and hit that, uh, you've got to make a barrier all the way around and block that off, so it does not so the light does not bleed into your windows, and vice versa. So, what I wish I would have done, and just a little notation to anybody who might be considering building this, uh, if you're going to mount the mounting rod do it here uh, because that would have been ideal and I didn't think about it uh, but that would have been the best place to mount that hole or drill that hole uh, you know and I just assumed that would be the best place because there's already a groove cut out for the stock base that comes with it in your stand that's the location where it snaps in and that's the location where your base would uh, normally attach so I didn't want to have to fill that big gap there with putty and, and do all that. So I just says, well, I'm just going to mount my rod in, at the same point. But at the same time, I wasn't factoring, factoring in lighting this thing and so on and so forth. Uh, now, it is quite doable. Uh, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I've seen a couple videos out or pictures out on YouTube and, you know, just doing a Google search where a lot of people built like a, a box a styrene box to shield off that whole front, you know, front section. But those people that did that also had their rod mounted back here. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is just use uh, foil tape. And I think what I'm going to do is carefully, and as you can see here, the windows come all the way back to there. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think the best way I'm going to tackle this is just taking foil tape and just wrap foil tape, foil tape to the back of this piece of plastic and kind of wrap it around and then also build a, a cover with the foil tape. So this is all covered off too because the top's got to be covered off and come down because uh, i got to create a barrier so all the blue stays in the front. Uh, and I don't think that's going to be too difficult. Uh, it might take a little trial and error, but uh, with a little bit of patience, I think foil tape would be the best way to do this. Uh, you know, I thought of using like really thin styrene, cutting it up and trying to make a make some walls and stuff. But being that the LEDs come so far, I mean, you can see there they're right right at the uh, top or right at the front where the plastic is. Uh, it would be very difficult to get the proper angles and such with, with styrene. So I think the best way to do it is being that uh, foil tape is uh, fairly flexible, or very flexible actually, and I can cut it to whatever shapes I need. Uh, I'll just mold it around the, the sides there, and uh, that should be quite adequate. But I'll figure it out. Uh, the other thing that I'm also got finished is i am decided I'm, you know, well, of course I'm going to light the uh, photon photon torpedoes uh, so what I ended up doing is I just took my LEDs and I took some styrene just some thin styrene 
and I cut out, I wish I had one, I, I, too bad I didn't do the video before I ins inserted or installed them, but uh, what I did is I just took the LED and then I just cut out, I can probably just show you here, um, if this was the styrene, uh, what I ended up doing, because these were three, they're, they're three millimeter square LEDs, uh, but what I ended up doing is I just cut it out and keep in mind now, this is uh, uh, the, I, I, I'm using not the Evergreen, but I'm using the, um, plat, what is it called, Plastruck Styrene. Uh, but anyway, I cut it out, I cut out a, a real small square, or actually, first I drilled a hole to mount the LED. Uh, and I'm sorry, let me back up. The, uh, the LEDs are round, but the... It's like a top hat. The top half of the LED is kind of square. The LED is then shaved down, you know, so it looks like a top hat, but the uh, the, back, the the back part of the LED is square. Uh, and they're three millimeter, they're really small. So what you can, what I did is I just drilled a hole for the size of the, the LED, and then I cut around, uh, I cut out a little square piece of plastic. So I kind of made a, like a platform for the LED uh, and then I just mounted the LED in the styrene flush. So that way I could come in here and all I had to do is I just had to CA the piece of plastic uh, as a, you know, kind of like a, a base to hit against the, you know, the back part of these, uh, the, the plastic. So that way I just CA'd, so it just kind of gave the LED a lip that I could actually just glue and then I just centered it on the hole for the photon torpedo, and the light just comes right through that uh, that hole perfect. I, it, I couldn't ask for it to turn out better. Uh, and then I just light blocked it with my uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 that I love so much. And I just uh, I just dabbed on, I just gobbed it all around the, uh, the LEDs there, and no lights getting through. Uh, so now I can just wire that up and run my wires down and then I decided I'm gonna buy a uh, a photon um, I'm gonna use the uh, quantum torpedo board from Ralph over at Tenna Controls and I still need to give him a call and or email him and let him know I gotta place an order for that um, money is just tight this pay period so I gotta wait till till next week before I can order it uh, and I've been told I looked at some schematics for Voyager, and I guess they do use uh, quantum torpedoes. So, kind of wanted the accurate effect. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go with. Um, but that's where we're at. Uh, I got that all taken care of. My next project this afternoon is I'm going to try to, you know, again make a barrier for that and block it off so all the blue lighting stays in the in the very front. Uh, then also once I get that all figured out. I'm going to go ahead and start doing some uh, paneling, some masking off for paneling here, uh, and then do some painting on this, because that's kind of where I'm at with the uh, the secondary hull. Uh, let me grab the aft section here. I'm just going to set down my camera for a second. Here, you can even look at, uh, eh, well, whatever. So, As I was mentioning before, uh, for the lighting uh, that I was going to tackle for the uh, back half of the secondary hull, uh, what I am going to do is I just because you don't see this part, uh, this is the part that this you know slides over and then it covers up the uh, shuttle bay and so on and so forth. That gives you an awesome room right here to I mounted another strip of LEDs. And when I fold, when I you know stick that back on there, that whole area is going to illuminate this very well. So that's how I'm going to do that. Uh, so the LEDs for that are for the back, the tail tail section of the uh, secondary hull. So that should work out well. Uh, what I worked on last night is I masked off, and I'm starting to do my uh, my panel colors or my the secondary co colors for the. Uh, the raised areas, you know, this color here will go, uh, it will go on this piece here, and it's going to go on, I believe, this piece and this piece and this piece. 
Uh, and then I'll mask all that off. I'm just waiting for this to dry a little bit longer because I would sure hate for tape to get on that and then peel that off because uh, I did quite a bit of masking to get that looking good. So, uh, And I'm very happy with the color. I, I, figure, I thought at first it would be a little too dark. Uh, as you can see here, here's the, uh, the plastic that I was talking about. And these, these strips here are about five feet long that I got from work, and I got a ton of them. Uh, but what I ended up doing is I ended up cutting them just, you know, I cut up a bunch of these just for styrene, you know, I can use it for whatever. So what I ended up doing, ironically, this, this plastic is almost the exact same color as the, um, the color that Voyager is molded in when you get it uh, from Ravel, Germany. It's, the grays are almost identical, which kind of is kind of coincidence, but uh, so what I ended up doing is I took this and I painted it. I just shot straight paint on it so it would be the same color as my model here. And now I can, I bought a bunch of different gray, gray paints. Uh, that way I could just do some playing around with and see, okay, which ones do I want to use for which areas of the ship. And this is dark gray. Uh, it's Model Master Acrylic, uh, the dark gray. I was afraid it wouldn't, it'd be too dark for doing this. But after I airbrushed it on, uh, I'm very happy with the color. Uh, I don't think, it's very subtle. Uh, it does stand out, but it's not like so dark that, you know, it looks funny. So uh, I'm very happy with that color. Uh, I'm going to do that throughout all the areas that it calls out for here, here. Uh, and then also all, you know, these areas here and here. And also it's going to be on the secondary hull. I'm going to mask off and start painting the, uh, the paneling on here that gets that color as well. Um, so, yep, I'm very uh, pleased with where I'm at so far with Voyager. Uh, it's going to look really cool once I start putting it together and it starts looking like a ship. Um, and I actually am thinking about putting this in tonight and gluing it down. Not sure of how far I'm going to get yet, but the only thing that I'm afraid of with doing this is that you only get <laughs> one shot at this really without damaging all of your uh, your paint. Uh, because you can see here, there's the groove that the back here slides into. And then you have to glue, you know, it slides right in there like so. And then you have to glue this down and glue that down. Well, as I'm going to be sliding this in and snapping, you know, sliding it into place, it's kind of rubbing against the, I mean, it's such a tight fit that it's rubbing against the, uh, the, um, the aft section as I'm putting it in. So hopefully, and very carefully, I'm going to have to glue that, you know, put, lay my glue down along the, uh, the edge here and then lay my glue all along the edges in there and along that section and as that glue is there I have to carefully put that in so I'm not smearing glue around and I'm not trying to adjust it and getting glue all over uh, because I sure would hate to have to do a lot of sanding and reputting and repainting uh, so hopefully that will go smoothly and it won't cause too much of a mess with the glue when I get it on there um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at so far with Voyager. Uh, it's a lot of work, and maybe it's just a lot of work for me because I haven't lit a model before. But um, but yeah, so, ooh, that's awfully close. Uh, but so yeah, that's where I'm at, and I'm really happy. Again, I'm really happy with my progress, and it's, it's coming along. Uh, it's just a matter of finding time to get it all done and, you know, uh, but that's where I'm at. Uh, one thing I did want to show that I was going to, I did mention on, on the Hangouts uh, a couple weeks ago is another kit that I picked up. And I, I told myself the next time I do a video, I'm going to, I'm not going to do an unboxing really um, because you can find them out on YouTube and it's kind of an older kit. But I just wanted to show it because it's it's a real, I think it's one of the coolest shuttles, or it's it's the runabout from Deep Space Nine. And I picked one up fairly inexpensive, um, and there's not that many on eBay anymore. But as you can see here, 
It is the Shuttle Rio Grande from Deep Space Nine. Uh, this kit was released in 1993, and the box that I bought was all smashed, but it was still in its uh, wrapping. It was unopened. All the parts are perfectly in good shape. Um, it comes with clear parts, so you can light this one, which I'm going to light this, because I think out of all the shuttle bays, shuttle bays, out of all the shuttles and uh, runabouts made, this is my favorite, and it's a good size kit. It's about 12 inches long or so. Um, just to give you an idea how long this thing is, I'll just take out the uh, the body of the, the, the ship, uh, and it's big. I mean, you can see here that this thing's got to be, well, that's over probably a foot, probably about a foot and a half or so. Um, but yeah, it's very detailed. Uh, I don't know how well this will fit together, but... Um, I'm really looking forward on building this because there's a lot of detail on this thing and it's going to look beautiful. So, um, Oh, and also, I did find out, and if anybody's watching this and, and has an interest on building this, uh, one thing with this kit for 20 years has never been available is unfortunately the, the windows here, and there's a bunch of windows uh, in the back and some windows on the side. Uh, there was never an interior for this kit. So all you had was you built it and if you wanted the windows to light, you know, instead of painting the windows black as it's shown here, uh, if you wanted it to have clear windows, all you'd have is this hollow model and it looked, it looked horrible. Uh, and when I was on a hangout a couple weeks ago, uh, it was brought to my attention that you can actually, they actually make finally a uh, a resin aftermarket whole interior with decals uh, the whole all the consoles in the front all are all decaled and, and it's a resin kit but it's a whole interior kit for the for the Rio Grande runabout uh, it's a little expensive it, it runs 70 bucks on Federation models uh, but if you go over to Federation models and you have this kit or you're thinking about building this kit Man, it's the it's it's money well worth uh, spent. It's well spent because really this this model doesn't do any justice without the interior. So uh, I haven't bought it yet, and I'm as you can see my progress with Voyager. I'm building this is still quite a ways down the road. So there's no sense for me to spend the money on the kit as of now. But uh, yeah, I, I look forward on building that. That will probably be my next build after Voyager. So. Um, well, that's where I'm at with with Voyager and everything's going on here. Uh, if you're watching, thank you for watching, and uh, you know, check out Boyd's uh, Hangouts over at uh, Trek Works and the Gang and Sci-Fi Model Action, or go to Sci-Fi Model Action's website and check out the forums. It's uh, it's great, great resource for for models and and modeling and a lot of things. A very friendly community over there and I uh, don't know what else to say but uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time on the next build series. Uh, thanks much and you have a great weekend. Bye now.